Hey guys, welcome back. We're finally going to get started with rigging our character, and this is the model that we're going to be using. This model was provided by Ori Medina, which is an amazing modeling artist. I've included a few links to his work down below. I highly recommend that you check some of it out. By the way, if you want to follow along, I also included a zip archive which contains all of the workshops that I'm using to create this entire series. Let's get started. I'm going to get started by creating my rig top. To do so, I'm going to double click any module from the module list to load up the rig creation window. I'm going to keep everything default for now, except for naming my character and create. I'm going to cancel the model creation just so we can inspect the rig top a bit closer. So let's take a look at the rig top. This is the transform that's going to contain the entire rig. So every component is going to be contained within this group to keep everything nice and clean. At the top, we've got the joint structure group, which will contain our entire joint structure. Underneath the puppet group, which will contain the puppet once we construct the rig. The guides group that contain the guides hierarchy that will dictate the behavior of the rig. The PLO group, which will contain everything picker related. The CS group, which will contain the control shapes once we extract them and the free joint group that we don't need to worry about for now. It's a good point to mention that everything block UI related is selection dependent. Before we do any action, we have to keep our selection in mind. For example, if I'm going to deselect anything from my scene and double click a free control, it's going to initiate another rig creation, which is something that I want to avoid. Instead, I'll select the parent guide that I want to create my new module under, and double click the free control again. I'm going to start off with creating a local control, which will be a secondary control at origin. I'm going to name my free control local and keep everything default for now at the common settings. I'll go into the module settings and select a square shape. Let's build the module and take a look at the result. A new guide called local was created underneath the root guide, which I requested as a parent. Let's take a look at the joint structure as well and see that a new joint was created that relates to our new local guide. It's important to understand that there is a direct relation between the guide and the joint. Each module has a related joint structure that is linked to it. So with that said, we're only going to manipulate the guide hierarchy. The joint hierarchy is going to be created for us. So now that we've got our local control, we can keep going and create the COG. That will also be a free control. I'm going to create that and call it COG, and now I can place this guide. Let's construct again. Great, looks like we got what we need for the COG. Let's deconstruct and keep going. Let's create a spine. Now I cannot locate any module named spine. So at any state, if you're confused about which model you should use, you can always refer to the documentation. But even easier, you can also hover your mouse over any module to take a look at its description. You will see a section called best for components, which lists some of the best components used for that module. And within the FK chain, I can see a spine listed, so I'm going to use the FK chain for the spine. Now I need to choose how many guides I want for this module. This attribute is a global attribute called number of guides. Often, this value has a minimum and a maximum. For example, this FK chain has a minimum of two guides. And why is that exactly? Well, if I've got an FK chain that has only one guide, it is basically a free control. Since FK behavior is derived by hierarchy, one control just doesn't make sense. For this spine, I'll choose three controls. I'm going to name this as well and keep it as a center component. We are going to cover the rest of these attributes as we go along. I'm going to go into the module settings and inspect some of them as well. I can see that this module has many layers and attributes. But for now, I just want to see how it behaves at base state. 
so I'm not going to touch anything and simply create the guides. As requested, three guides were created, as well as three related joints, one for each guide. Now I can see that I've got a typo in my module. So I'm going to go back into the module settings and fix my typo. Once I update the module, you can see that the names have been changed for all module relatives, not only the guides. I think this is a good point to demonstrate some of the parenting behavior in Block. As you noticed, I'm only editing my guides hierarchy, and not my joint hierarchy. The joint hierarchy is related to the guides and their hierarchy is going to be matched. If I want my spine to be parented underneath my local control, I simply need to parent the guide and the joint is going to be reparented automatically. To further demonstrate, I'll unparent the spine module to see its related joints behavior, which has been unparented as well, which is the correct behavior. Once I reparent my spine guide back underneath the local guide, the joint will follow and be parented under the local joint. Now I can place my guides. Once I'm happy with the placement, I'll reconstruct. Now that I've constructed, I see my world control, which is created with any rig, the local control, the COG control at the position that I've chosen, which is the parent of the spine, and the spine controls, which are a simple FK hierarchy. When creating a spine setup, we often want to give animators IK control as well. So let's see how we can add that in. I'm going to deconstruct and go back to the module settings. The FK chain module contains an embedded IK layer. This layer creates a root, mid, and top controls, which are embedded with the FK controls, which is exactly what I need. Again, if you're ever unsure about any layer or any attribute, you can always refer to the documentation or check the tooltips on the attributes. I'm going to choose to do embedded IK and leave everything else default for now and update the settings. Nothing is going to happen since the attribute I change is not a joint structure member. So let's construct and check the result. I simply see no change, and that's because we set the IK layer default visibility to be off. Let's locate the viz switcher, which is currently placed on the module's AnimTech control, which I'll explain about in the future. Let's turn the IK visibility on. Now I see the IK root, mid, and top controls. Great, so I've got the embedded IK behavior. Let's deconstruct and take a look at a few more attributes within the embedded IK layer. We've got the default visibility mode, which is currently FK, the curved degree of the IK interpolation, which I'll explain more about in future videos, and a choice of a mid-tangent controls. I can also choose the control shape for my embedded IK layer that I want to change from a flat diamond to a round dial. The channel control is going to dictate which channels in the channel box will be open to animate. I'm happy with these settings, so I'll update the module. Let's construct again. As I mentioned before, the visibility switcher is not comfortable to access, so it's a good spot to learn about the attribute host. Let's deconstruct and take a look at its section in the module common settings. The attribute host allows you to create a different control which we can position that will contain all extra attributes, just like the IK visibility switch, to make it accessible to animate. I'm going to choose to create an attribute host for this module, and I'm going to choose a plus control shape for it. I'm going to place the attribute host position guide and construct again. Once I construct, my new control has been created and the extra attributes have been transferred to it. At this point, you must be wondering about the control shapes. I'm not going to worry about the control shapes for now, I'm going to edit them in bulk once I finish placing my guides. I hope this video gave you a better reference of the build method. Since nothing in block is static and the modules are layered, the construction starts with a very simple template and as you iterate while tweaking the settings, you can tune the puppet to best fit your needs. Please like, share and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video.